What is up everybody, Dak here, and today I'm going to be going through the differences between the 4th order band pass and the 6th order band pass, and which one might be better in whatever situation. So first off, how they work. Just like the other video, I'm going to go through how they technically work, just to give you an idea. So I've explained the differences between the sealed and the ported box, and how the difference is, you've got this port which air can flow through or resonate through. So air can move through at its tuning or below. Now this is this is very key because in a fourth order bandpass, when you've got a ported section and a sealed box, the port is the only thing you can hear. So in this situation, only the port tuning in below is heard. So 20, 25 hertz and down. The sealed portion kind of traps the air so this is just like a sealed box this is just being just being it's kind of wasted energy so when we look at this graph you can see right here that this is a sealed box and then this is a sealed box with a port on the front of it tuned to 20 hertz and you can see that at 20 well tuned to 25 hertz and you can see at 25 hertz it's much louder it's about 8 dB louder but you can see that everything above there is just wasted energy. At 50 hertz, you're much quieter than even a sealed box, and sealed boxes are the least efficient boxes. So you can see that this isn't really an ideal box. But what you can do is you can shorten the port, you can tune it higher, so now it plays from 60 hertz down, and you can see just how much more energy we have that's useful up here. And when you factor in that you might only li be listening to your sub from 60 hertz down or from 80 hertz down, you can see that this is all added energy. We're not really missing out on any of that because we're not listening to that. And you can also see that it does remain consistently above a sealed box, which is interesting because at very low frequencies, you are hearing the sealed portion and at these high frequencies you are now hearing the ported portion. So it acts like a sealed box with a ported box to boost the high notes here. A large enclosure and once again this is a large box with a short port which gives it a high tuning and also makes it good for SPL because large boxes tuned to high frequencies are good at SPL which is why this graph right here has such a big spike in it that's that's good for SPL. Uh, but what if you want to port the sealed chamber? So you've just tuned that, that to 60 but you've still got this huge slope. What if you want some energy down at 20 hertz? Well you port the sealed chamber at around 20 hertz and you make yourself a sixth order. So sixth orders have two tunings as you can see two different ports, two different enclosures, two different tunings often have two peaks similar to a camel's humps. That's how you can tell it's a sixth order. If it's got two distinct peaks, it's most likely a sixth order. Uh, tuning both peaks the same frequency though uh, results in cancellation as one uses the front of the driver and the other one uses the back. They are out of phase and they will cancel out as when one's, one port is pushing air out, the other one's sucking air in and will result in just kind of no output or at least very little output. Uh, fifth orders though which I learned about recently uh, anyway, comparing enclosure variants there's a couple different fourth orders you can have usually it's based off the ratio of the tuning or of the volume of the front to the back so for example one to one is pretty common one to two is pretty common uh, there is also one to three and above but they're more for SPL um, this one just here, the one-to-one, -one, is quite common. And what this does is the smaller your box, the less of a, a peak it's got, uh, which means you get a, a smoother frequency response out of a one-to-one. -one. And one-to-two, you get a bit more of a, a peak in the higher frequency range. And the higher the ratio, the more exaggerated those effects are. Uh, but yeah, due to the sealed portion, fourth orders are said to have good cone control. Just like people talk about sealed boxes sounding better, fourth orders are also, well, at least supposed to sound better, but of course that's up to the listener. 
Uh, in order to obtain lows, the driver must be capable of high excursion though. Unlike a ported box, which port loads the box at low frequencies, these ones are port loading at high frequencies. Fourth orders port load at high frequencies. And it means that um, down low, it's just the raw movement of the driver creating all the sound. So you need a high excursion sub to move a lot of air to be able to keep up with the output. So this often means that you need a long voice coil which overhangs the voice coil gap on either side and leads to the sub being inefficient which is why high XMAX subs have a low efficiency of 85-86 dB. So that's one of the downsides to a fourth order which is you need a high excursion often low efficiency sub. Uh, but lows may also be obtained by using lots of low excursion subs, high diaphragm surface area to compensate, although you can choke these subs, you can over damp them, they don't have enough excursion then, and they can't cool themselves effectively often or have enough box rise to fight the current, which is what heats them up, current heats them up. Here you can see uh, two different examples of high excursion subs. We have a Grand Zero X Max, and we've also got a Sundown uh, NS4 10 inch, and this is 15 inch. Um, this is neodymium sub. If you're wondering why the magnet's so small and looks kind of odd with those holes in it and lack of slugs, uh, and this one's just a standard ferrite motor, but you can see that they've both got high roll surrounds deep baskets and this one's got multiple stack spiders and I imagine this one does too but it's it's hard to tell. And now on to 6th order band passes and the variants of 6th order band passes. There are two main variants, series, aligned and parallel. Uh, series is more common in cars. This is when you look into a port of a car and you see all the subs and then you see ports up the back often. This is a series 6th order. Parallel is more common in home and hi-fi kind of thing. And each one has its own benefits. This one acts like kind of like a, a faux horn because it goes from a chamber to chamber to chamber. It kind of acts like a horn. Um, whereas Parallel, uh, the advantage here is two different ports and you can do specific things which, with each one. A uh, series though, Usually you need to have a big wide front port in order to allow the airflow in the low frequencies to freely flow through. Something else too is the ratios. Just like a fourth order ratios matter. In sixth orders, typically in cars, they'll have a one to one ratio, which is one tuned to about 20 hertz and then one tuned to about 50, 45, 60 hertz, somewhere around there. And what this means is that it'll have a nice big spike up in the 50 hertz range, and then it'll have a bit, not so much though, down in the 20 hertz range. But if you want to do a one to three, you won't have as big of a peak at the 60 hertz range, but you will still have a lot of energy at 20 hertz which is why it is more ideal for home and hi-fi. You can get a, a, nice, a nicer frequency response because you're not so limited. And you can see right here, uh, you can see that the one-to-one -one ratio is this cyan line and the, well this is actually a one-to-four ratio, is this yellow line here. You can see the yellow line's got a much uh, smoother frequency response. It's kind of, it doesn't have this weird kink down here. It is roughly smooth across here and uh, that's why it's preferable but in cars once again if you're trying to make a build which not only does low frequencies and has a bit of wind you do probably want to register a high score on the meter which is why one to one ratios are quite common for getting a nice peak up in the higher frequency range too. Uh, as most of the frequency range 2 of a sixth order is being port loaded uh, the driver doesn't need to be high excursion, it doesn't need to have a lot of coil overhang, and it doesn't need to be as inefficient. 
uh, you can use an efficient driver to make the most of it though a lower QTS driver which has a PQ response uh, is often preferred to the high QTS speaker for the forethought so that's another determining factor if you've already got the sub if it's got a low Q it's you're better off if it's below 4 you're better off putting it into a 6th order and if it's above 4 you're probably better off putting it into a 4th order uh, something to know about 6th orders though uh, in 4th orders the sealed box is responsible for the lows it's the only reason you could do 10 hertz in a 6th order you need a big low tuned box with a big long port to tune it low if you use a small box and have too small a port then it will just act like a fourth order and you may as well just go with the fourth order then because you will get the better speaker damping so you need a bigger chamber and six orders end up being a bit bigger on average than fourth orders so anyway here's some more fun facts about fourth and six orders and their implementation uh, fourth and sixth are both great for behind the B pillar builds they make the most out of any space you've got back there a flat wall you might only have space for 615s and then the port but because a fourth order and sixth order is only the port uh, anything behind there you can just fill with subs you can put for example this one here this is a, a huge build but you can see that it's 20 subs you can see four subs wide it's a four by four by four cube uh, foot cube and you can see just how many subs you can fit in here compared to maybe you could fit um, at most 12 subs on the front here with the port so that's why another reason why fourth orders and six orders are popular for loud builds because you can fit a lot of drivers into them another thing you might see is there being no port on the front chamber of a fourth and sixth order these still do act like if you want to pause and read this these still do act like a fourth order although the tuning is determined by the depth of the enclosure and some deep enclosures for example if this had two 18s it would be a meter deep and would actually tune to 70 hertz which is low enough to be useful useful as a high frequency port as you can see 140 hertz isn't very useful but 70 hertz is pretty good 60 hertz is good and 50 hertz is about ideal for most builds uh, another thing is cabin gain now cabin gain improves your output by 12 db per octave from about 50 or 60 hertz down and it's the reason my fourth orders are so windy you might have seen the graph and thought that's hot i know a lot of really windy fourth orders and that's because in reality they perform more like this curve here than they do this very sharp one here so when you've got a lot of air movement and it's loud and a lot of fourth orders can still be loud at low frequencies this is why it's also why sixth orders are so windy you can see this big peak here at, at about 20 hertz which is pretty crazy you know um, it's kind of shows that this software isn't always accurate um, I just drew these lines myself it's not any setting you can do so yeah there's a there's a bit of a fun fact which is why often low frequencies sound louder in cars than you would think anyway in conclusion fourth order benefits uh, these are the only boxes that can really do 10 hertz other than uh, sealed boxes but not a lot of sealed boxes are used in SPL so fourth orders can do 10 hertz uh, good for high QTS high excursion subs with its damping um, ideal for high excursion subs to make the most out of them uh, one single large peak make them good for SPL builds you know you saw before how it's got this nice peak here even with the cabin gain it still peaks at 50 60 hertz um, which is good for getting a nice SPL score and also they are slightly more compact than 6th orders and 6th order benefits are more controllable frequency response curve due to two individually tuned ports two chambers you can really tweak them to what you want 
uh, good for low QTS, stiff, heavy, high power handling subs, low excursion subs. These are all good for those. Um, and high efficiency enclosure design. Uh, sixth orders make more use of the sub than fourth orders do it. You can really get the most out of a sub by putting it in a bigger box usually and a sixth order is a good way of putting a sub into a big box and having it perform well. And here's my opinion too, I personally prefer sixth orders to fourth orders. Uh, sealed and ported both have their times but I do prefer sixth orders to fourth orders if you can design them properly they sixth orders can outperform fourth orders in a lot of cases so it's just as long as you design it properly uh yeah six orders can be fantastic uh anyway um thanks for watching i uh, hope you found it interesting if you did uh leave a like possibly subscribe too uh thank you for the recent subscribers getting me to 100 uh so and also thanks to uh, my friends Rouse and Andrew for some software and for motivating me to create this video. Um, and I'll once again thank you for watching and I'll see you later.